Hi, good morning. Welcome. Come on in, friends. Come on. Come to the table. I hope you got your coffee. Got my coffee this morning. We also have um, Hank joining us. Would you like to see him today? Let's see. He's looking outside. Hey, Hank. Hanker. You want to say hi to everybody? Anyway, so there's Hank, and he'll probably cause a earthquake in a minute. Dina, good morning. Good to see you. And Mary, good morning. Come on in, ladies. I hope you had a restful night last night. Got some sleep. Priscilla, good morning. Good to see you guys. So here, here's my coffee. Got your coffee. Got my Bible. Got my journal. Time to pray us up. Let's get us going for this morning. Deb, good morning. Teresa, thank you for joining. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pray us up as everybody gets on. Hey, Mary. Lord, we just love you and praise you. Hallelujah. We just say hallelujah. We are so thankful that we have this word of God. We have you, Jesus. We have Holy Spirit. Lord, I just pray that you speak to us. This is a very familiar passage today that it would open up to us in new ways that that lights would just come on god it would be your holy spirit lord we just thank you for this time together i pray for those who are not feeling well for a touch on them lord for healing on them for those who need emotional healing spiritual healing physical healing we know that you are our great physician. And so I pray a touch on them. For those who are worried today, I pray this message brings peace. For those who are stressed today, I pray that they can give their trust to you. Lord, we love you and praise you. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, Bonnie Zoo Beardsley, good to see you this morning. Thank you so much. I'm be here, Kathy. Good morning. Good to see you, too. Okay, guys, here we are. We are studying the I Am statements. There are seven of them in the book of John, and we are studying John 10, 7 through 10 today. This is a very familiar passage for, for a lot of us. Eddie Williams, good morning. Good to see you. So, John 10, starting in verse 7, if you've got your Bible Turn there with me. Read it out loud with me if you can, if you're someplace where you can do that. Therefore, Jesus said, again, I tell you the truth. You know, he's always telling the truth. Jesus always tells us the truth. Can I just get an amen? He always tells the truth. I'm telling you the truth. He says, I am. There's that statement. I am. Did they hear when they heard him say, I am? Did they hear what, who God told Moses he was when, when Moses said, Who do I tell the people is sending me to them to save them from Egypt? And God said, I am, which is Yahweh. We say Yahweh, but I am who I am. I will be who I will be. Right? Did they hear that? I just wonder if they did. Debbie Johnson, good morning. But I wish I could have been a mouse back then. Don't you wish you could have? live well part of me wishes i could have lived back then and then the other part of me is like that was a really tough time to live in the world you know it was dirty and hot and hard and crucifixion all over the place so i'm not sure i would want to accept to see jesus but anyway so back to back to the scripture we're in john 7 Good morning. Hey, hey. Debbie says, good morning. Okay, here we go. John 10, 7. I tell you the truth. I am, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep didn't listen to them. <laughs> I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Now, all of us probably know that verse 10. We probably have that memorized. Hopefully you do because it's really powerful, right? The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life 
and have it to the full. Now, it says um, in the beginning of chapter 10 that he starts talking to them about being the shepherd and the sheep and the gate and that they're confused by all this, which really surprises me. Hey, Barb Sutton, good morning. Surprises me because in Ezekiel and some of the prof, um, the prophets prophesy of, of this good shepherd. And um, so... I'm surprised that this confused them, but but Jesus was often he often spoke in parables and analogies, and those who were truly seeking his truth, who really wanted to know him, who really wanted to know the Father, those who didn't have another agenda in mind, they're the ones who heard. They're the ones whose ears were opened, whose spirits went, Oh man, this is the one. They're the ones who, who got it. And so he comes to them and he says, I'll tell you the truth. I am the gate. So I think this is really cool because we're going to say we've seen that he is, we've seen that he's a light. We've seen that he's a living water. We've seen that he is the bread, the living bread that comes down from heaven. Oh, thank you, Eddie. We see all those things. And now he's saying we're going to see, he says, we're going to study it tomorrow that he's a shepherd. We're going to see that in verse 14. But before he gets to that, he says, I am the gate. So the, the way I understand it from my studies from the past is that the shepherds, when it was time for, you know, the sheep to be safe and it's the end of the nighttime, they would find... They would find an area up against the mountain and where the sheep could go and then they would they would make a little, you know, fenced in area with rocks or stones so that they would stay within that. And so then there was there was the gate for them to come in. And he says, I am the gate. I am the the way for them. We're gonna see that in a minute too, that scripture for them to come in. So let's see. He says I am the gate for all those who come in will be saved. Those who enter through me will be saved. That word saved. Hey, Ellen, good morning. And hey, thanks for sharing. Thank you, Mark. Okay, so um, saved is sozo. And sozo means to save. It's in Greek. Everybody can say that word, sozo. So you have a Greek word now, sozo. To save, deliver. It means to make whole. It means preserve from danger, loss, or destruction. And in this particular instance, in this verse, it is talking about salvation, um, spiritual salvation, according to the um, commentaries that I'm reading. But I, I love the term of being made whole. Yes, I, I want to be saved from destruction and uh, from danger, and, and if we look at that as a spiritual salvation, it doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to walk through this life without any problems. But it does mean we have the promise and the hope of heaven. And so, Sozo, those who come through me, those who enter through me will be saved. I love what he says after that. He says, he will come in and go out. And find pasture. What I loved about that was there's this freedom, right? There's this freedom. It's not like we're stuck. It's like there's this freedom. He can go in and he can come out and he will find pasture. So there's this freedom. Do you hear the provision in that scripture, that verse, that promise? I am the gate. He who comes through me or the door, as some translations say, he who comes through me can go in and go out and find pasture. So I hear this provision that he's promised. And you hear he says they will be saved. So there's this sozo word, this word of, of um, being made whole, being delivered. Anybody need to be delivered from yourself? Amen. How many of us I need sometimes just to be delivered from myself, my own worries, my own pride, my own selfishness. I need to just go to Jesus, to go through that door, to his safe place, right? To his safety. 
He says he will come in and go out and find pasture and in freedom, really. Do you hear the provision of the pasture? And of course, we go to Psalm 23, and we're going to be going there tomorrow as we talk about Jesus being the good shepherd. We'll be talking about Psalm 23. There's a word here that's very important that I don't want us to miss. And that is in, in verse 10. He says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life. Now, we talked about this word, I think yesterday or the day before, that this word life, there's two kinds of life in the Greek. And one is bios, which is just the living at an um, ordinary life we have, what we do um, here on this earth. But this life is Zoe. And this kind of life is eternal life. It's everlasting life. So I've come that they may have Zoe, that they may have eternal, everlasting life. I've said this before, guys. We were never created to die. We were created to live forever. We were created to be eternal beings. And that's why we want it so bad. That's why we, we by all this stuff to make us um, look young and stay young and we work out and we want to live forever, right? That's why it's in us when he created us. That's why he created us to live forever. And here we have the way. Jesus says, I am the gate. You've got to come through me to live forever. So nothing in this life can satisfy us, right? But Jesus, he's the living bread. He's the water. He's the light of life. So what does, let's talk about for a minute, what does the gate do? Venus Schrader, good morning, sister. So the, uh, the Venus, oh. so talk about multitasking, trying to teach this. Sometimes it's a little bit crazy. Um, so what does a gate do? So a gate lets you in, but a gate also can close, right, and keep us safe, keep us safe inside. So I see Jesus is not not only our our way, our provision, open door that He's provided, but He also He's promised that He will keep us safe. He will keep us safe. Go to John fourteen six with me. In John fourteen six, this is actually the bite um, for Saturday, which we're not going to be teaching. So let's go ahead and look at that. This morning, John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to me or to the Father except through me. So let's look at the, I want to look at the context of this. Hey, Lee, good morning. Because as we celebrate this Holy Week, as we prepare our hearts for Easter, the scripture in John 14 this is what he's telling his disciples before he's going to go and, and be um, taken and judged and crucified. And so he's preparing their hearts. And in John 14, I just love this. And I feel like somebody needs to hear this this morning. Maybe that somebody is me. But he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. And trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back. Amen. Amen. I will come back and take you to be with me. That you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Okay, so that all leads us up to verse 5. Thomas said to him, good old Thomas, doubting Thomas, don't you love him? Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am, we go, I am the way and the truth and the life. I am the way. The truth, Jesus is always the truth and the life, that Zoe life, that eternal life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I know people have been upset oh, that, that we would say that there's only one way to the Father, but can, 
Can I just say hallelujah that there is a way to the Father? Thank you, Jesus, that you have made the way, that you have, you are, you are the door and you've opened the door and you are the way to the good, good Father. You are the way to this sozo, this eternal life where we will live abundantly, this abundant life. So let's go back to the abundant life. Go back to John 10. Go back to John 10.10 10 with me, that famous scripture that I think we all have memorized. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they may have life. It's not even saying you. I have come that they, those sheep that know me, those sheep that hear me, those sheep that follow me, that they may know me and they may have life and have it to the full. The word full here in the Greek Hey, Laura, the word full is parisos. And parisos, this is the cool word. To find my... Parisos is, is full, it's over and above, it's more than enough. It means abundantly, excellence, extraordinary. So let's just plug those words in there. I've come that they may have life. And have extraordinary life, abundant life, more than enough, excellent life, over and above. But remember, my friends, what kind of life is he talking about? That life is the eternal life, the forever life, the Zoe kind of life. So I think this, you know, this verse has been really taken out of context a lot. We think, oh, we're going to be rich and we're going to have this and this and this. And and he does give us those blessings as we can handle them, as they're not going to, you know, hurt our heart in any way. But he's talking about, the life he's talking about is this eternal life, this Pariso life. He is the gate. He is the way to this eternal life. Oh, somebody say, amen. Can you wait till you get there? I don't think so. I'm so excited for that. But until we get there... What do we do? What do we do? We got to listen for his voice. We got to keep on studying and being in this word. We got to keep on trusting him. Remember, we got to trust him. Go back to John 14. Don't let your hearts be troubled, my friends. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me, says Jesus. We got to trust him. Let me finish this morning with Jesus Calling, because it's all about trust. So for today, April 12th, and Jesus Calling says, Trusting me is a moment-by-moment -moment choice. Amen. <laughs> My people have not always understood this truth. Hey, Diego, good morning. After I performed miracles in the wilderness, my chosen children trusted me intensely, but only temporarily. Soon the grumbling began again, testing my patience to the utmost. You know, I read something, this is a long side note. So I read something, I'm studying a, a book, where the man said, you know, they had this slave mentality. When they came out of Egypt, they still had the slave mentality. And that's why they reacted the way they did with God. How many of us still have that slave mentality, that slavery to sin, that slavery to selfishness, that slave mentality, instead of walking in, stepping in who we are as the children of God? As his favorites, as the one who's, who have been called, who Jesus has shown the way for eternal Zoe, for that abundant life. Isn't it often the same way with you? You trust when things go well, when you see me working on your behalf. This type of trust flows readily within you, requiring no exertion of your will. When things go wrong, your trust flow slows down and solidifies anybody i mean i think we're all guilty a little bit of that if you are forced to choose between trusting me intent intentionally or rebelling resenting my ways with you 
This choice constitutes a fork in the road. Stay on the path of life with me. Go through the gate. Enjoying my presence. Choose to trust me in all circumstances. John 10.10 10 says, The thief has come to kill and steal and destroy. So how do you know? Jesus says, I speak the truth. and My truth gives life. Abundant life is extraordinary. So how can you discern when you're on the right path with God? And, you know, when you're not, when you're trusting Him and when you're not. For me, I, can, I feel it in here. When I don't have that peace, when the fruits of the Spirit aren't flowing through me, when I am when I'm feeling, you know, just restless and icky and I'm not trusting God. But when I come back, when I come back to the goodness of God, no matter what, no matter how bad the circumstances is, no matter how I cannot figure out why things have happened the way they have, no matter how bad my pain and hurt is, when I go back to the goodness of God, and we see that in Jesus, he is the goodness of God in the flesh. Everything he did was good. Do you see that everything he did was good? He touched people. He healed those people who asked, and he died for us so that we could live. Hallelujah. Amen. So when I am back to the goodness of God and living in that, I feel that extraordinary fullness of life. That's how I know. Diego, amen. We're so glad you were with us. Um, I'm going to read that. And somebody else, y'all read what Diego has to say. It looks like some good stuff. I need to pray you up and let you go on your way because it's time to go. I'll get a Bible study to teach this morning. Hold my hands. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. Lord, thank you for your peace. Thank you that there is a way to the Father and that you showed us the way. Lord, for those whose hearts are troubled today, I pray for your peace to fall on them. I pray for your grace, for more trust of your goodness and your kindness and your mercy. That you walk with us, that we can come in, we can go out, and we can find pasture that you provide. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's in your name, your powerful name, your name, your authority, that we pray this prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Go out there. Be a threat to the enemy. Be kind to those around you. Pray for those and around you. Stopped at the stoplight in the traffic. You just start praying for all those families represented by those cars. I like to walk through my, my neighborhood and pray for all the families represented by the homes in my neighborhood. That they would come to know the gate. They would come to know the way. And his name is Jesus you guys have a great day. Love you. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be back. And we'll be on John 10, 11 through 15 about Jesus being the shepherd. Mwah. Blessings. Have a great day. Bye.